Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to show you how to mix a soda ash solution that's used for tie-dyeing. This soda ash solution is necessary for tie-dyeing to properly bond the Procyon fiber reactive dye to the fabric. Soda ash is sodium carbonate, not to be confused with sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. It's mildly alkaline and it's used to raise the pH. You want the pH to ultimately be around 10.5. If you would like to have more information about soda ash and the purpose for it in tie dyeing, I have a blog post on my website and the link for my website can be found down below this video in the description. Whenever I'm handling soda ash, I always wear a pair of gloves because it can irritate my skin and I wear my respirator so that I don't inhale any of it, especially in powdered form. I don't wear my respirator once I have it mixed into a soda ash solution. I'm going to mix my soda ash solution into a five gallon bucket that has a lid. And for convenience, I've used a Sharpie to mark the side of my container at the one gallon mark, one and a half gallon and two gallon. Today I'm going to mix up two gallons of soda ash solution. I purchased my soda ash from Dharma and they suggest using one cup of soda ash per one gallon of water. So to mix two gallons of soda ash solution, I'm going to use two cups of dry soda ash. I'm going to add the soda ash one cup at a time though. After I add the first cup of dry soda ash to my five gallon bucket, I'm going to add just a little bit of warm water into the bucket. The dry soda ash will immediately begin to kind of clump together and so I'm going to use a spoon to stir that and break that up to get it to dissolve in the water. If I left it alone and just filled up my container, I would have large chunks of soda ash down in the bottom. And when it clumps up or forms chunks, if you don't get those broken up and dissolved really well, they don't just sit there and dissolve over time. They become just like rocks down in the bottom of the container. Every now and then I also take my hand and put it down inside of the soda ash solution. And if there are any clumps or chunks, I will run them through my fingers and try to break them up. When the sodium carbonate hits the water, it forms kind of a mild exothermic reaction. So those chunks that I'm breaking up with my hand do get a little bit warm. Not necessarily too hot to handle, but they do get a little bit warm. I'm going to continue mixing until I think I have just about all of the clumps gone and most of the soda ash dissolved. Then I'm going to add one more cup of dry soda ash to this container and continue mixing. I mix my soda ash solution in a bucket that has a lid because I reuse my soda ash solution. After I soak a shirt, I usually wring it out of my panda spin dryer, which has a spout at the very bottom of the spin dryer. And I put a pitcher underneath that spout to collect all of the soda ash that's drained out of the shirt. Then I just pour it back inside of this bucket and continue to reuse it. This soda ash solution will last a long time. I keep mine in my dye space, so it is more of a temperature controlled area. But in the past, I used to keep it in the garage and other places. And like I said, it lasts a long time. Most of the time I would run out of soda ash before it got funky or weird where I had to replace it. And you'll know when that happens, it starts to smell really weird. And I usually just dump it out at that point and remake some new. Remember, I also don't put any items that have either been previously dyed or that I have done a color removal process on into this main soda ash container. If I do a color removal process on a shirt and then I soak it in soda ash, sometimes just a little bit of leftover dye will come out into the soda ash solution. I don't know that it necessarily affects affects the shirts if it discolors a little bit, but I just don't like to do that. I like to keep my soda ash solution nice and clean and reuse it over and over. 
Okay, so it looks like I have almost all the soda ash totally dissolved into this water. From here, I'm gonna start adding just a little bit of cold water into the bucket and continue stirring it just to make sure I don't have any odd chunks left in there that didn't get fully dissolved. If you don't wanna take the time to have to stir to dissolve the soda ash, you can use an immersion blender or something like that to mix your soda ash solution. I don't mind having to stir it with a spoon, so this is the method that I usually use. As I'm adding the water to the container, I'm making sure that I don't go above that two gallon mark. When I soak my shirts in the soda ash solution, I normally go ahead and turn the shirts inside out to begin with before I even put them in the soda ash solution. I like to dye them inside out just in case there's any speckling from undissolved dye. And I think it's just easier to do it before I put it into the soda ash solution than it is to try to turn them inside out when they're already damp or wet. Then I usually soak the shirts for at least 20 to 30 minutes. I wanna make sure they get soaked really well and all of the fibers are fully saturated with the soda ash. After I spin the shirt out on my Panda spin dryer, like I said, I reuse the soda ash and then I go ahead and tie the shirt like normal. I've had people ask if I'm going to dye a shirt when the shirt is already dry. If I go ahead and put the shirt aside after it's been soaked and then tie it. I don't do that because whenever you have a dry shirt that has been soaked in soda ash and you handle it a lot, the dry soda ash will kind of poof or kind of flake up out of the shirt. And I don't want to inhale any of that while I'm tying the shirt. It's just a lot easier to go ahead and tie the shirt while it's still damp, then allow it to dry out. Okay, so it looks like we're almost there. I've gone ahead and added almost two gallons to this container. And I'm giving it one final stir before I put the lid on and I set it aside. It is ready to use immediately though, if I wanted to place some shirts down inside and then go ahead and make sure they were fully down inside of the soda ash solution before I put the lid on top. I like to always keep my soda ash covered, even when I have shirts soaking. Okay, now you know how to make the soda ash solution that you use to tie dye. And if you guys have found this video helpful, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.